The £102,000 Tesla Roadster Sport is the fastest electric car on sale and has just had a facelift to tweak its styling and freshen up its interior. In Tesla's own words, it redefines the supercar. So despite its attractive hue trying to give me green thoughts, I'm going to drive it like a supercar. No talk of tailpipe emissions or battery range. No jokes about hippies or milk floats. Just driving. Performance mode gives me the full 288 horsepower and I'm taping up the battery meter so I'm not tempted to keep checking the range and rein in my enthusiastic driving style. Make sure you give it some hammer tip. Oh well, don't worry. This is all about finding out if an electric sports car works in the real world for a petrol head like me. I'm going on a typical driving day out, a 150 mile round trip from the outskirts of London to the south coast seaside. The car is supposedly good for over 200 miles between recharges, so I shouldn't even have to think about running out of volts. Now, I know it sounds a bit naff, but let's be honest here. If you spend £100,000 on a supercar, you want people to take a bit of notice. But right now, I'm not getting many heads turning. Even if they do look, I'm rather worried they'll think I'm just in a £30,000 Lotus. A plus point, though, is that its 375-volt motor produces maximum grunt from a standstill. Now, of course, one place where the Tesla does have supercar performance is on the traffic light Grand Prix. <laughs> See ya. 3.7 seconds is all it takes to hit 60 miles an hour. That's faster than a Ferrari California. And it's not just the figures that impress, it's the way it achieves them. Something dawned me that, of course, I haven't changed gear at all since we left. I'm like petrol engines where you've got to change gear to keep it in the, the revs. But now, 50 miles an hour, I just tap the throttle and we launch. It is impressive. And the Tesla will keep on accelerating like this to an electronically limited 125 miles an hour. Not exactly a supercar speed. And there's another problem. The trouble is I'm beginning to realise what I'm missing. I mean, OK, that acceleration is wonderful. But, but I have a supercar. I want to be involved. I want to be changing gears. So what about the handling? Well, a boot full of batteries means the Tesla weighs over 1.2 tonnes, so it's no featherweight. To compensate, the suspension has been stiffened up, which makes potholes very uncomfortable. Oh, thump, thump. But maybe this hard setup will be more suited to a track. So I switched off the traction control and diverted for a few hot laps of the Goodwood circuit. I'm not sure how much power I'm using, but this had to be done. And now I can feel this chassis that was probably too stiff for the public roads. Feels, no, it doesn't feel frisky. It's still a bit dead understeery. It's just the car feels a bit well, it feels as it is heavy. Up to Lavard Core, the tight one. Will it oversteer? No, it... Oh, it sort of understeers and then lurches into an oversteer. Break and turn. Oh, I think I... Oh, oh. No. No, no. With my brief and slightly disappointing track test over, I pressed on for the last 10 miles to the seaside. Made it to the seaside, a distance of about 80 miles, so it shouldn't be any problem getting back. If electric is to be a true substitute for petrol, then you should be able to use it without worrying about a limited range. So I drove the two hours back to the banks of the Thames in my usual style. And yes, I've made it. The question is, how close did I get to running out? And the answer... Eight miles. It might not really be a supercar, but it is a very good electric car. And a trip that would normally cost £30 in petrol costs just £4 in electricity. But consider this. 
you'd need to do nearly 300,000 miles in a Lotus Elise before you'd offset the Tesla's hefty price tag. Being green in this car isn't cheap.